Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial will be about making a globe, a 3D globe that we can use as a complement to any sort of artwork that we have or a logo for instance. Um, now in order to make a realistically looking globe we are going to need the help of um, an image here. Okay. Now in order to get to this image you simply go to Google and in Google you look for a um, a world map outline um, if it's a vector uh, image better so we can scale the object without losing its properties and um, just make sure it's royalty free so we won't have any problems with um, sort of uh, design infringement and the one that I chose was this one which was higher resolution to the other ones it has to be filled so because this might not be a gapless object. If it's a gapless object, if it's a gapless object, then we can fill in, fill it in with a color like that. So we just go down, go to the source page like so, and we just simply yeah it says it's free, so don't think we'll have any issues there. And we can just simply download it and save it to our desktop like so. Uh, pull up um, Coral Draw, press Control I and just simply import the image drag the size of the image into your workspace uh, ungroup all the objects like so yeah press p although you won't need to center it here it doesn't really matter i'm going to change the object just to make sure that it is indeed a uh, vector and um, that it's all a fillable object good um, for the next part, we will need to make a circle, um, and the circle just put place it on top of the map. Make sure it's not too big, not too small. It covers the top and the both parts of the of the continents. Um, and um, we're going to make a copy of this circle. Um, so uh, just add it to another page. I'm going to make. Um, I, sorry, I'm going to make four copies of it. Um, one, two, and then. Okay, that's good. So, take off the color, the color fill. We won't need it. What we will need is the fish eye lens. Now, I have it here enabled, but if you don't know how to get there, just simply go to Windows, go to the Dockers and then where it says effects click on lens or just simply alt f3 which is the hotkey right and uh, let me enable this uh, feature and you will see that what it does it is it uh, distorts the the image and it makes it uh, round okay so this is ideal for our globe all right um just nudge uh, nudge the circle using the uh, the cursor keys or the arrow keys. I think this is nice. Um, I won't need the parts of Madagascar here, but it's uh, it's pretty decent. I'm going to freeze that image, and I'm going to copy it and add it to another page. Here, I will need to align it. So press P to center align the object. Won't need this anymore. Right. Um, the next part we need to do is uh, we're going to make the um, a color fill for our object. So go to page three where we've got the copies of the circles that we've made. Um, add it to another page and um, give it a color fill. I'm going to press F11 so I can give it a nice fountain fill and enable the elliptical fountain fill here. Uh, I don't much like this color, so I'm going to change it. And I've already got my um, hex code, so I'm just going to type it in. Double zero, one F five C, which gives it the color that I'd like. And I'm going to add another one here in the center. It'll be a cyan. So um, again, double O D E F D. Okay, 
and I'm going to drag the center to the left a little okay all right um, I think I'm ready just okay good this is exactly what I'd like hang on now uh, something that um, is is useful is the fact that you see here it's already gathering the colors that I've used for um, for the project that I'm doing however there's one color that's missing up and that's the black one if you would like to have all the colors at your disposition all you've got to do is drag the object down to the bar and now you see the black is there with the white as well so it it, uh, it stores here locally all the colors that you use during the the same session so I think it's very convenient uh, I'm going to take off the outline I won't need the outline but this is definitely what I, I need now we're going to make them um, the contours or the latitude and longitude lines to our globe and to do that well, we simply go back to where we have the copies of the circle I'm going to cut it and again paste it into another page um, why do I have to why am I doing this well basically so I can go back um, I can go back to the stages the previous stages without having to go through the whole stage again if I make a mistake so that's why I, I do it um, and I'm going to take off the filling color and, and simply going I'm simply going to make a, a copy of this um, so um, just uh, drag press shift and the right click to copy go move this up a bit and then make it an oval shape like so uh, this is way too thick I'm going to highlight wanted uh, a hairline thickness nudge it up a little bit okay this is going to be my longitudinal lines so I'm going to make another just a simple copy of this one here the top nudge it down and um, I'd like it a bit rounder so I'm going to press the shift button and simply drag inside so it's nice and rounded well it's rounded anyway now this is a uh, next tool we're going to use is um, is the blend tool which is extremely useful uh, to fill in the gaps with the lines that I'd like I'm just going to use four lines it's not too many and um, what we're going to do now we're just simply going to remove the excess lines here so we have to select the whole object uh, where it says arrange we're going to break the, all of these objects apart and ungroup them okay right now I can um, work with all of the lines individually so remember we only need actually here we won't have to make any changes but in this one we will because we've got outlines you see the lines out there this is what we don't want so what we're going to do is just simply simply shift click on the uh, sort of the small circle and then on the main larger globe circle if you will and then just intersect again the small and then the globe circle intersect shift intersect and again the last one uh, and intersect okay just remove the outer circles we won't need them okay right this is what you'll have good now um, the next one is simply making the latitude lines which go up and down and for this I'll go back to the circles that I have here and um, I need to align it next to one another this is pretty easy to do what you do is you have the go to view and go to where it says alignment guides make sure it's ticked okay and you will notice that as you move it around you will see some lines that will visually give you help on where 
the alignments are. So here's exactly what we want. It's right aligned with the top. Okay. Take off the fill color. We will not will not need just the outer color. Again, um, this is all very very thick. It shouldn't have been done that. Make sure that all of the lines are hairline thickness. Um, yeah, I know you can do that by default, but uh, I always say I'm going to get to it, and I never do. So um, press Control Q. We're going to make this a curved object, and press F10 to uh, use the, sh the shape tool and you're simply going to break these lines uh, nodes apart and um, just delete the fragments we don't need <coughs> the segments and we're going to drag and drop this um, these lines here make sure that this line here make sure that it's uh, originates from the center or it looks as if it originates from the center of the the topper uh, the top uh, circle um, I'm going to shift this up a bit okay like so now here it doesn't look very nice so I'm just going to shift select shift and drag it in a little bit okay that's okay and I'm going to make a copy of it pressing control and right clicking um, it looks a little bit too symmetrical for my liking, so I'm going to just change it like so. Good. Right, now again, use the very useful blend tool to fill in the other lines. Four would be more than enough. This just gives you an, an idea that it actually is the... The, the contour lines. Now here uh, you will see that they have lines missing so we just use the Bezier tool. So again Bezier tool try to you know use your better judgment to find out where the center is. Just drag and drag like so. We're gonna Hang on we're gonna have to move out um, let's do that again. So here it drags, drag it up to something like this. This looks okay. It's too thick. Press F12. Hairline. And what I'm going to do is just make a copy of this and make the necessary changes here so it actually is as a contact with the other nodes okay um, click outside enable the Bezier tool again um, you have to do that otherwise the Bezier tool think that it's just a uh, you're gonna carry on with the previous segment and we'll just connect it and that's what you don't want Okay, press Alt, move this around. I think this is um, this is good enough. Okay, hairline and um, make a copy of it of ten, and just simply okay, move it around. Doesn't have to be that accurate because. It won't be that much of a big deal. Okay, I think this is okay. You can have another one up top, but I'm going to leave it as this. You can choose. Right, now, um, we're not going to select them all. And we're going to break them all apart. Uh, okay. It's all grouped, so you won't have any... No, it's not grouped. We will group it, though. Okay, like so. And, um, right, that's what we'd like. Okay. The next stage is very simple. And what we're going to do is simply, um, uh, locate our world map here, ungroup it, 
we don't need the outer circle so hang on we don't need the outer circle so I'm just going to take it off and we do need the map to just control C and paste it to our previously made globe map now you will have you will see that there's not much contrast between the you know with all these blues so I'm just going to give this a white fill like so okay and I'm going to use um, uh, the drop shadow to give it a sort of effect to it so move it around until you can actually see a ghost image right like so I'm going to just give it a one pixel feathering and I'd like this to be on the outside like so gives it a little bit of a darker contrast and just move this in a bit uh, a wee bit more okay that's it that's what I like okay um, the next part is um, to simply um, add the contours that we made here copy and just paste it on top see the benefits of having everything aligned it's just a question of a copy paste job here and right click to give it a white line there now these lines are actually on top let me just see yes they are you may choose to have them underneath or on top that's up to you I'm going to leave it on top okay and finally just to make um, the last adjustments you can see that um, the white coloring on the map is identical everywhere yet this is a globe so there's got to be some sort of shade around here so you can make that shading um, you can make that shading by I'm going to take this off by pressing shift um, give it another color so I can locate it when I need it press F11 and we're now going to use um, gonna give it I'm going to give this as a, a, a grayish color but um, very 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 subtle okay so you have a little bit of white here and it's actually a bit too much isn't it right just uh, move this along and actually you can make this a, a little bit darker if you want I'm going to give it a since we've been working with blues I'm going to give it a um, darker color like so okay now if you put this on top there you have it and there you should have uh, your globe uh, finished well I hope you liked the tutorial it was very simple um, if you've got any questions or if you've got any feedback that you'd like to give me please don't hesitate to drop me a line at the comment section and don't forget to subscribe for there will be more tutorials coming up soon well this is me Leo signing off thank you very much